Filbert exercise number two, the common method measuring the distance in the direct measurement with the tape. The distance measured with the steel tape is much more precise than the distance obtained by facing. The precision obtained depends upon the degree of refinement with which the measurements are taken. Ordinarily, taping over flat, smooth ground with a steel tape or chain divided in a thousand of a meter provides a precision of a 1 in 3,000 3, to 1 in 35,000. When the ground is fairly smooth and the ground cover vegetation is light and low, the effort required to measure the distance between two points or a set of points ahead of some required distance is very minimal. If the ground is not too rough and hilly, and in general considered as gently rolling, the tape procedure required would be slightly more difficult than the required for taping on the flat ground. In, in this fieldwork report, the surveyor will learn techniques and principles as well as some considerations to be made when taping a labeled ground and an even ground. So let's proceed to the objectives. First objective is to develop the skills of taping the distance on a level ground where the tape is fully supported by the ground. Second and the last objective is to acquire the skills of taping the distance on an even ground where the tape is only supported at the ends. Let's proceed to the instrument and accessories which are needed to perform this fieldwork. First in the list is the range poles. Second is measuring tape. And lastly, markers which are chalk or marking pins. So let's discuss the procedure. Part A, taping over a smooth ground or a level ground. The professor assigns the accessible and unobstructed course to be measured by a surveyor on a level ground. Second step is to mark the endpoints by a chalk if it is on a pavement or by a marking fin if it is on a soft ground and designate it as an endpoints A and B. Step 3. A range pole man holds the pole vertically and steadily during the entire taping procedure at B to keep a complete taping process aligned and straightened. Step 4. The tape is stretched out on the ground on the straight path along A to B where the zero end is held ahead. Note, the zero end is nearer B than A. The rear tape man is responsible for giving the signal to the front tape man if his path is straight while the front tape man is responsible to pull the tape taut once the tape is aligned already. Step 5. The front tape man gets a pin and sticks it vertically in the ground exactly opposite the 0 meter mark of the tape. Step 6. Rear tape man holds one pin and the rest of the pins which are 10 pins are held by the front tape man. Step 7. Both the front and the rear tape man lift simultaneously the tape and move forward along line AB to measure the next tape length. By now, the rear tape man holds one marking pin which signifies one tape length. Step 8. The procedure 4 to 6 is repeated to complete the next tape length measurement. Make sure that the rear tape man pulls the pin before lifting the tape to move on to the next tape length. The rear tape man holds two marking pins to connote that two tape lengths have been measured. Step 9. Repeat the same process until all the pins being held by the front tape man have been used up which signifies one tally. One tally is equal to 10 tape lengths. After a tally has been accomplished, the rear tape man returns all the 10 pins to the front tape man to proceed in measuring the length of the course. Note, one round is when all the 10 pins are now being held by the rear tape man. Step 10. Repeat the same procedure if more than one tally is needed. Upon reaching point B, the partial length must be measured accurately up to centimeters by the rear tape man while the front tape man is holding the zero mark at B and both of them are holding the tape taut. Step 11. The number of small pebbles in the rear tape man's pocket 
now indicates the number of tallies made and the number of pins in his possession indicates the number of additional tape lengths. This is recorded in Table 2.1, Taping over smooth or level ground. Step 12. To compute for the total distance, get the total number of full tape lengths and then add the partial tape length to the product of the length of one full tape length and total number of full tape lengths. Step 13. To compute for the mean distance, determine the sum of total distance, then divide the sum by the number of trials. And last, step 14. To get the relative precision, determine the probable error of the mean, then divide by mean distance and reduce the numerator to unity to determine the relative precision. Procedure B. Taping over an even ground. The same course is measured, but this time, the tape will be unsupported by the ground and must be held an eye-level distance above the ground. Both the rear and the front tape man hold the plumb line over the center of the hub. The front tape man must hold his plumb line an arm length away from his body for the rear tape man to clearly see if it is aligned in the range pole at B. Once the rear tape man approves the alignment, the front tape man holding the O mark pulls the tape taut and drops plumb bob on the ground. This will mark the ground with a dent to guide the front tape man where he must place his marking pin. This is to be done continuously until point B is reached. Note that the partial length must also be measured as in procedure A. The course is measured back and forth to complete the number of trials required by the professor. Tabulate the data in Table 2.2, Taping over an even ground. To compute for the total distance, get the total number of full tape lengths and then add the partial tape length to the product of the lengths of one full tape length and total number of full tape lengths. To compute for the mean distance, determine the sum of total distance, then divide the sum by the number of trials. To get the relative precision, determine the probable error of the mean, then divide by mean distance, and reduce the numerator to unity to determine the relative precision.